Hi friends. It's good to see you guys. My name is Jenna Sullivan and I am a pastoral resident here at Wilshire Baptist and I'm so excited to be here. Um, I'm going to wait a few minutes to see, um, let you guys join in. It is not as chilly this morning as um, it's been in the past, so I don't know where you are. Maybe you're on a front porch or you're sitting on your couch um, wherever you are I'm so glad that you're here and that you're joining us so come on in come as you are grab your Bible um, if you've got it handy that'll be helpful and once again, my name is Jenna. If I don't, if I haven't met you personally, um, I'm a new pastoral resident here at Wilshire, and I'm so happy to greet you this morning. Um, whether you're part of our community and have been around for a while, or um, you're new to our community, or you're just finding us on Facebook, uh, we're so glad to see you and to be. Um, connecting with you this morning. I'm going to give us just a few more minutes. Um, I am, since I'm sitting outside, if, if I have technical difficulties, just put in the comments that there's a connection issue or if you can't hear me, I want to be sure that everybody um, can hear me really well and see me and if that's an issue then feel free to let me know at ASAP and we can readjust. Um, how are y'all doing this morning? How's your, how's your soul today? I, um, I know that there's a lot going on right now. <laughs> And I'm sure that each of us is carrying uh, something different, a different struggle, a different situation. And um, I just want you to know that I see you and I'm so glad that you're spending just a few minutes here in this Bible study with me. We this morning are going to talk about keeping the faith. Question mark. Because what is faith if not um, often coupled with some doubt? And so I, I want us to kind of keep that question mark on there. Um, hello, George. Um, because it's what we're going to be talking about. We're going to be talking about the realities of doubt. And how do we keep the faith in these times? What does faith look like? Um, what is what is good faith right now how do we stay grounded in what we know to be true when times are turbulent and painful and uncertain wow <laughs> if you have the answers for me then then let me know um luckily we have an ancient book of scripture that that can offer us some some guidance on this this question of faith and I want us to, um, we're going to go, we're going to muse on faith for, for a few minutes. And we're going to go into different parts of scripture and talk about different ways of understanding faith. Um, I think that we often um, assume that the Bible has one perspective on faith. And... That's not generally true. Uh, there's, there's multiple perspectives, and um, we'll look at a few different ones. We're going to look at Matthew, uh, Proverbs, and 2 Corinthians. If you're like me, you struggle with faith right now. We are in um, what has often been said, unprecedented uncertainty a global pandemic with surging numbers, 
I don't have to repeat the headlines to you. You are very aware of them, I'm sure. And if we're honest about our spiritual lives, what's going on inside of us, um, maybe, maybe not for you. I won't speak for you, but I know for me, it can be really easy to start to question, where is God? What's going on here? Um, how can I remain hopeful? How can I remain peaceful when there's so much that um, threatens that and, and makes me feel unsure of God, of myself, of the world? Where do I find respite when the world feels really shaky? Have you ever felt like that right now? Do these times challenge your faith? Well, we know that our God is a God that can handle doubt. And as, as people of God, we're always somewhere between doubt and faith, right? Um, Paul Tillich actually said that sometimes he thinks his job, he thought his job was to bring doubt to the faithful and faith to the faithless. Where do you find yourself in that mix? I think as, as our space has become more progressive and we've allowed more room for doubt in our faith, I think Wilshire is a place that allows room for doubt. We can also allow so much room for doubt that sometimes we feel so comfortable in our doubt that we forget to challenge ourselves to explore new possibilities of faith. So this morning that's what we're going to talk about. Um, how do we leave a lot of room for doubt and also leave a lot of room for peace. It's not easy when there's so much that threatens our peace. I want to make three points about faith, what a good faith right now might look like for us, a good biblical scriptural faith. And the first point I want to make comes from Matthew, and it comes from when Jesus describes faith using um, an analogy. He was, he was apt to do that. Um, he said, and remember that Jesus hung out with a lot of people that he often said, you of little faith. And there can be some judgment with that. And we might struggle with, you know, why was Jesus always um, confronting folks about their lack of faith? So let's, let's hear what he says in Matthew. He says in chapter 17, Because you have so little faith, for truly I tell you, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, Move it from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. Nothing. So my first musing on faith is that it can be really small. Did you know that a mustard seed is only about a couple millimeters small? It's actually this tiny, tiny thing. Jesus is calling us to faith, but sometimes our faith can be a small, small thing. A small but potent thing. Faith can be small, even the size of a mustard seed. Maybe you remember times when you only had a little bit of faith that something might be different or that hope was possible. But it was enough for what you needed in that exact moment. So my first thought about 
faith is that it can be really small. And sometimes it's hard to even have a tiny amount of faith. We may not even realize that our faith is the size of a mustard seed. In other words, we might think that um, we don't have any faith at all, but then compared to another person, we have a little bit more the size of a mustard seed. So I wonder in these times what it would look like to have just a tiny bit of faith. What does that look like? And when is that hard? Maybe maybe you're in a place in your life where um, that mustard seed amount of faith is actually seems unattainable. <laughs> um, I think that's okay wherever you are in your journey. There's space for that. There's room for that. But together we hear this call from Jesus that we can be invited to have just a tiny, a tiny small amount of faith that might just be enough to sustain us for this day. Moving to Proverbs, another uh, example we have this beloved verse, Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to God and God will make your paths straight. My second thought about faith this morning is that it can't be specific to an outcome that we desire. And what I mean by that is we can't tie our faith to one specific outcome, one specific expectation, because that would be based on our own understanding, our own hopes, our own expectation. And when that thing happens, that thing, the diagnosis, the, the cancer, the job loss, when we've tied our faith to that one expectation, then we can feel hopeless because we've, we've, we've lost that one outcome. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Can you remember a time when your own understanding wasn't quite enough? Meaning that the picture was a little bit bigger than what you understood at the time. Maybe you didn't have all of the information, or maybe there was a little bit more um, going on than you realized. Maybe there was more mystery to faith than you realized. There were more um, truth that seemed to be beyond what you understood. My second thought about faith, number one, is that it can be really small sometimes. And number two is that it's not tied to a specific outcome or a specific expectation. And that's really hard, isn't it? Because so many times we want to have faith that God will do a specific thing for us, that God will move a specific mountain, a specific diagnosis, a specific situation will change. But I think our faith can be bigger than that. I think our faith can be deeper than that. Yes, we can leave room for specific changes in specific situations and not limit God's power. But we can also remember that faith is about more than just hoping for a specific outcome that is 
very tied to our own understanding, our own thoughts and hopes and expectations. Again, this is, this is so difficult and it's not easy. Um, and I don't say this with judgment about where you are in your faith in God right now in our world. It is so easy and, and to be in a place of, of real, real painful doubt. But I think a, a good faith right now might call us to have small moments of trust in a God that is not dependent on our specific outcome for a situation. So then what is faith? If it's not tied to, a, to our own outcome, if it's not very big, <laughs> If it's the size of a tiny millimeter of mustard seed, what does faith look like? Paul struggled a lot with faith. It was something that undergirded his entire ministry and life, but it was something that he still had doubts and struggled with. Frederick Beatner says that faith is the ants in the pants. That doubt is the ants in the pants to our faith meaning that it keeps us moving. I love that image. And sometimes we have more ants in our pants than other times, would you agree? Um, Paul had a lot of ants in his pants because he was always on the move. Um, and I think that's part of what kept him faithful and grounded is because he was always on the move. So 2 Corinthians um, chapter 5 tells us that faith is something like this. Therefore, we are always confident, although we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. My third musing about faith is that it's mobile. It involves action. We're on the move. When we become still, when we retreat or hide, when we stop moving and engaging in the process, the conversation, the relationship with God, that's when we're in trouble. But if, like Paul says, we're walking, sometimes crawling, sometimes limping, sometimes dancing. But if we're moving, then that will help us to stay grounded in a real, a solid, a genuine faith that can even sustain us in the times we face today. We can keep moving. Now, I, I, I love to... Um, give Paul a little bit of a hard time about this walking by faith and not by sight. Have you ever truly walked by faith? And I'm talking about like it's dark and you had to get up to use the restroom and there's no lights on in your bedroom and you got to find your way to the bathroom and you do not have sight on your team. Um... It is really, really hard to move when we don't have sight, right? It's really hard. And when you're making your way to the restroom, you know that you have to feel for things. You have to look for, um, not look, but you have to be aware of your surroundings. It's really, really difficult. And so, that's why I also think that our mobile faith, our active faith, requires us to be in community. We have to hold hands while we're in the dark walking together. I don't know about you, but I don't want to be working on my faith alone without a hand to hold. 
That's why community is so important in these times. That's why church is important. It gives us a space to work out our faith together, to cultivate faith together. And so my third point about faith is that it's not supposed to be done alone. That's why if you find yourself really struggling, you might be missing a core component of faith, which is that it's supposed to be done in community. We need each other. And Paul knew that. If Paul had tried to do faith alone, can you imagine? We would have had quite a different set of letters. In fact, he was working out his faith through writing letters to his community. So I encourage you to think about what faith in community might look like for you. What would it look like to um, share your doubt with someone you trust? What if you sat down with a friend and said, I'm really struggling with wondering where God is in my life. And see where God shows up in that conversation. If we're going to walk by faith and not by sight, we have to hold hands. We can't do it alone. We have to be in it together. And we can work out our faith together in community. In Hebrews, um, faith is talked about as um, believing in things unseen. And I'll read that also as part of our lesson. Faith in Hebrews chapter 11 is the assurance of things hoped for and the conviction of things not seen. For it, for by it, the people of old received their faith. By faith, we understand that the universe was created by the word of God so that what is seen was not made out of things that are visible. So in another translation, we understand that Everything around us at one point was not visible. It's kind of a confusing verse, but what it's basically saying is that we're surrounded by things that other people hoped for, hoped in, that they couldn't see. And so hope in that way is generational. It's, it's, um, it goes on before us. It's, it's tied to our, our great cloud of witnesses, as Hebrews continues to talk about. But it's really hard to hope in things unseen. And right now, there's so much that we're hoping for. A vaccine, peace in our nation, justice for minorities. There's so much that we hope for that we do not see evidence of. There we are again, walking in the dark. But what if we remembered that our faith can be as small as a mustard seed, that it isn't tied to our own, our own expectations, our own plans, our own understanding, and that it's done together holding hands, walking together in the dark, leaning on each other when times are difficult I don't know about you, but that might be a faith that I can do. <laughs> that might be a faith that's possible. It's not easy in these times. But I think what sets us apart as people of God is that, yes, we are willing to leave a lot of room for doubt. Don't hear me out. Don't hear me wrong with that. We can leave a lot of room for doubt. And, here's the and. 
I think as people of God, what sets us apart is that we also leave a lot of room for faith. Not a cliche faith, not a toxic positivity faith that makes you feel guilty when you cry or have really terrible days and not that kind of cultural hallmark, it's all going to be okay kind of faith. That's not what I'm talking about. Although a house two doors down from me does have written in the window, everything's going to be okay. And I'd be lying if I said it didn't comfort me sometimes driving home. But that's not the kind of faith I'm talking about. Everything may not be okay. This is a different kind of faith. It's sturdier. It's deeper. And it can weather some storms. It's comfortable with doubt, but it's also not so comfortable with doubt that it never leaves room for moments, even small moments, of peace and hope and joy. It leaves room for those things. So that would be my challenge for us, even in progressive spaces that are very comfortable with questions, very comfortable in the language of doubt, much more comfortable than a generation ago, I would say. We can ask questions here these days. Questions aren't scary for us. But what if we could challenge ourselves to sometimes cling to small moments of peace? Small moments where we feel the rod of the staff in the valley of death. We leave room for the possibility that a, a tomb might be rolled away. A baby could be born. We leave room for those things. We leave room for the possibility that we're not alone in life. That we are always held in the arms of God that there is a bigger story being written that we get to be part of. I hope that the kind of faith we cultivate here at Wilshire and in, in your life and in your community is one where questions are welcome and efforts to cultivate together, hand in hand, stumbling in the dark, moments of hope, moments of peace, maybe even moments of everything's going to be okay. All shall be well. My prayer for you this morning is that you might, even in the midst of all that's going on in our nation and in your life and in the world, my prayer for you is that you might have moments of tiny, tiny mustard seed size moments of mysterious and communal faith. That's my hope and my prayer for you. And when that feels impossible, that you'll remember that our Savior was one who always hung out with a lot of people who he kept saying, ye of little faith. And he might keep saying that to us. Jenna, ye of little faith. But that's not something to be ashamed for, having little faith. But there is always an invitation, an invitation hold tight to a God that does not leave us or forsake us. Even when the winds are shaking and our boat is rocking around and it seems like Jesus is just going to stay asleep on the boat if you remember that story.
what are some ways, some practices that could help you to cultivate this kind of small, mysterious and unpredictable and communal faith? I talked about reaching out to a trusted friend and sharing um, your struggles with doubt. What are some other practices? Another practice is to identify things in your life that were at one point unseen. I'm going to say that again. Identify some things in your life or in the world that were at one point unseen. Maybe it's a new job that you never predicted that you would actually find. Maybe it's a friendship that you knew you needed, but at the time you could never see what that friend would look like or be like. Identify regularly situations that were at one point unseen. And remember that it's okay to be in a season as we're in right now where there's a whole lot unseen. Lean not on your own understanding. I think this is a call to pray often, to stay in prayer, to stay in communication with God. So this might look like starting a prayer journal or being honest with God about where you are in your journey of faith. Ask God to show you God's understanding of something and see how that differs from your understanding. Be open to other ways of understanding. Maybe your small, mysterious, and communal faith isn't a logical faith that happens in your brain. Maybe it's experienced in your body or in music or in singing. Maybe it's understood in a different way. Be open to other ways of understanding. And the last practice is stay in community. Remember that this work of faith that we're called to is not easy. And there will be so many times where we need to lean on each other. And that's always the call to stay in community. And when you're especially afraid when you're really, really scared, when God seems so very far away, reach out to someone you love. Take their hand and keep moving. Keep stumbling forward. Because remember, faith happens on the move. Paul didn't sit around and hide. He kept moving. And it's in our mobile faith, what Barbara Brown Taylor calls a hope that has cleats in it. It's, it's um, not ruby slippers, but cleats. An active hope. It's this kind of faith that we need too. A faith that keeps committed to action and movement and engagement. And we might find God as we stumble forward, not as we fall down and, and hide. I hope these reflections were helpful for you. Um, I wish that we were in person and could um, really be together and I could hear your questions and your comments. Um, I know that it's a hard time and, and I want you to know that you're loved, that this community prays for you, and that we are really in this together. 
you're not alone. And I hope that you find tiny moments of mustard size seeds, mustard seed size faith that is bigger than your own understanding and keeps you on the move with others. It's in this spirit that I will close us in prayer, and then I hope that you will um, join us for worship this morning, and also that you'll come to church in the lot later um, this evening where we will continue to struggle with hope and faith and all that good stuff. Let's pray together. God, we ask that you would somehow show us the way of faith, Not a kind of faith that discounts the hard things. We don't want that kind of faith, God. But we also don't want the kind of faith that discounts the good things. The places where you are active. The moments where change happens. The tiny glimpses of resurrection. And so, God, we ask for a faith that balances these two things that grounds us in your love, that shows us more about who you really are, how much you really care, and where you're leading us. We love you, Lord, and it's in your son's name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me this morning, and um, I'll see you next time. Till then, keep up the faith and the questions. <laughs> Bye, you guys.